Hi guys and welcome to your daily tower reading for Wednesday the 30th of December 2020. Thanks for joining me. A lot of people have asked about the horoscopes for 2021. I'm going to do those when I'm back in the UK early in January. So I'll post those when they're ready. Let's see what the cards have to say about today and what energy you'll be working with on Wednesday. The new dog is here with me. He's just sniffing around. We got my mom a new dog yesterday. His name is Olaf. He's really cute. Hey Olaf, how's it going? Yeah, we, we got really lucky. We were looking for a, um, like a rescue dog. And then they're all closed because it's locked down here. Hey, doggy. And um, we kept looking and we found this kind of breeder who retires the dogs when they're kind of six years old. And um, we got the dog. It's amazing. And he's gorgeous and nice and really sweet. So we're all over the moon with that. Let's see what the card has to say about today. Ah, speaking of dogs, we've got Canis Major again. Then we've got Orion. And finally, we have Aries, the Emperor again. The Emperor has been around a lot, so it's kind of the season of the Emperor. It's really deciding what you want to do, what direction you want to go in, and really listening to yourself and your sensibility which says this is right this is what's going to work for you and this isn't so i hope you are feeling this fiery energy and it's empowering so first of all the eight of swords canis major that's often a card that um, shows that you feel stuck and you can't see anything and you can't see things clearly you feel like there aren't many options We've got these eight swords pointing down. So that feeling may still be there. I mean, it may be something practical like the circumstances that we've all been experiencing this year. And you may feel like your options are limited and things aren't magically going to be different in 2021. But with the box at the center there, it shows that you're not powerless. You're not someone who has to kind of just let the world dictate to you what's going to happen and what you're going to do. We've also got Venus and Gemini. So Venus is Aphrodite in mythology, the goddess of love and beauty and creativity. So what what is the saying? Um, love conquers all. So the answer to any feeling of negativity or depression or anxiety or lack of options is thinking with love. And it's really true. If you enjoy yourself in life and if you find joy in things, the universe is going to meet you halfway and it's going to present you more things to be happy about and if you're unhappy all the time and you focus on those things unfortunately and that's sometimes why it feels really cruel to be on planet earth because when things are bad it's normal to say well this sucks and when you get into that headset then you manifest more negative things so here the solution to the problem is first realizing that you're not this victim you're someone who has a lot of power and you're also able to kind of guard against negativity. So when you see it come up, you recognize it. You don't have to feed into it. You don't have to take it as reality. You can say, this is what's happening now. But I should choose to believe in the good stuff and the joy and the love that's available. So that's going to be a big solution to any kind of limiting circumstances that you've got. Gemini is about communication. It's an air sign. So you can take the initiative to talk about things. And also swords is the element of air. So your understanding isn't going to be compromised. You're going to see things very, very clearly. So you can really listen to your own uh, judgment and your own opinions on things. And by looking at things clearly without shying away, you can see the glyph of Gemini. Here's a Roman numeral two. One and two is a relationship, so the relationship you have with yourself, your own thoughts, your own circumstances in your life, and how you can get through those. It's a doorway. So how are you going to move ahead? So it's a really nice take on the Eight of Swords because you are not, you know, um, rudderless. You're not a unable to kind of take care of yourself. You are very able to guard against the negative stuff in your life. Think with love and find a way forward. Then we've got the Four of Pentacles, Orion. We've got Orion's belt there. Orion and the Four of Pentacles um, is about hanging on to things too dearly. So being usually it's it has to do with being miserly and thinking that money is your security, where it isn't. Your ability to create and to be um, 
productive and to add value to the world, as long as you're able to do that, money isn't going to be an issue because you're able to put something out there that other people appreciate. So it can be a service or a business or some sort of writing if you're a creative person. Other people will find the value in it if you are creating genuine value and you don't need to hang on to anything. The belt here, we've got this um, kind of young warrior guy with a club and he's just kind of caught his prey. He's caught his dinner there. And the belt is kind of tied around his waist. So I don't really see how this is associated with being too miserly. This serves a function. So if you're hanging on to things, you may think it serves a function, but really the best thing to do is to let go and you'll be provided for anyway. We've got Venus again. So that really is the answer for anything that comes your way that's problematic. To think with love, to think in a positive, joy-filled way. And Taurus is about control of the physical world. So you are someone who can produce and create and who can really um, do something that secures your place on planet Earth. You don't need to go out hunting and you don't need to try and get and grab and pull and cheat. You can do something from within because that's where abundance resides anyway. So see this as a, as a cup almost. This is almost like a bowl. So rather than hanging on to things and digging your your claws into something trying to get, because that never works. If you try and get something, or if you're jealous, or if you're envious of other people and what they've got, same thing, you just create more things to be jealous about. If you realize that you have all this value within, and that you've come to this planet with everything that you're ever gonna need, then you're really focused on yourself and you're able to grow that positive thing. And that's when you're able to really, um, you're able to really create something worthwhile for others. Venus, rules Taurus and Libra. So when it's in Libra, it's about um, being considerate of other people and seeing how you can do something for the greater good and fitting in nicely and creating beauty and loving love in itself. In Taurus, it's translating that intellectual beauty or spiritual beauty and saying, I'm going to give this some sort of tangible form. So if you're a creative person, if you're a writer, you don't need to grab and get. All you need to do is look within and the strength that you've already got, articulate that, translate it into something that other people can access, and you're sorted. Finally, we've got the emperor, and that's kind of this whole journey. So by believing in yourself, by looking at what's going on, by not getting overly hooked into something, and not being obsessive about a specific detail, but looking inside of you instead and letting go and letting it kind of flourish and thrive, that's how you become the emperor. You're able to do something that's fun and enjoyable. You feel motivated by it. You get lots of different options because the thing that's inside of you can be translated in many different ways. If you're creative, you can be a singer or a painter or a dancer or a, an architect or an engineer or a, uh, you can be a fashion designer or make pottery or whatever it is. It's not just one path that makes itself available to you. So you've got a choice. And the main thing is, do I enjoy this? Is this being created with a sense of love, with a sense of authenticity? Does it come from within? And does it make me feel strong? And if you do that, you've already got all the ingredients to become the emperor, because the emperor is after power. And in this case, he's someone who really feels like he should be in charge, and he kind of pushes his way forward and makes himself super strong. But if you use that inner strength, then you don't really need to think about other people. You're just saying, hey, I've got something valuable that I want to share. And then you automatically get into a position of power. So it's a different approach. But in my experience, it's a much better approach because then you don't have conflict in your life. You're just um, opening up something that's already there. You don't have to generate something on your own. Freedom by the bird. This wand here with the airy symbol. So by following your own will, you can wave your magic wand and create wonderful things in your life. The symbol for Mars, the masculine principle of energy and drive, really kind of um, pervasive in all of these cards because we've got real strength here, we've got strength there, and we've got major power and strength here. So there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing lacking. You don't need to acquire anything to be perfect or to get to where you want to go you've already got it so again the thing that is going to 
solidify any of your actions is, does this bring me joy and pleasure? And if the answer is yes, then you can rest assured that the universe is going to work with you, doors are going to open for you, and it'll be something that really puts you in a good position. So self-reliance, independence, and having fun while you're doing all of those things. Four, and four is eight. So four is about structure and security. So you're structured and secure within yourself. You're not riddled with self-doubt. And really, while I've been doing these readings, there haven't been many cards that have talked about a lot of self-doubt. It's really a season where you're meant to step into your own power and use it to your advantage. So four and four is eight. Eight in itself in numerology is strength. And then we've got another eight, which is 16. Eight and four is 12 and four is 16. Yep, so one and six is seven, and seven is the mind and creativity. So all you've got to watch out for is that you don't overlook your own strength and your own abilities, that you really take stock and ownership of that and say, I don't need to acquire, I've already got. And then look at how you can be creative or how you can, it's not just creativity in a literal sense, so I paint, I draw, I dance. It can also be creative about how you go about your business. So if you're applying for jobs and you've got a, you know, eight year gap, then you don't need to um, say, I've been out of work for eight years. You can say, you know, I did something for eight years that was very personal and you can frame it in a way that's still honest, but that doesn't put you in a bad light. So you can use your mind and your creativity to really reflect who you are and your strength. And that's really important today. So have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via the website, gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your readings to order your reading with me. Hit the like button if you like this video. Click on subscribe to be part of our community here on YouTube and share the video online. That'd be awesome. And um, like I said, yeah, I'm going to do the horoscopes when I'm back in the UK. I brought the equipment, but it's, um, I don't know, it's a little bit um, challenging here. So... I'm going to do the 2021 horoscopes for each sign of the zodiac when I'm back. And um, yeah, have an amazing day and I'll speak to you tomorrow.